listening to me today. My name is Nathia again. And like I said, I don't have MS, but I do have an autoimmune condition. And from what we know about that is they're all very much related and kind of stems from similar issues. And, um, and the approach for healing is pretty much all the same for that too. So today we're gonna talk about diet because that's my specialty. Um, like I said, when I was diagnosed, I went to doctors. It sounds like a lot of you have, have had similar um, experiences where you go and you don't get a whole lot of answers besides, yeah, we'll try this medication and it's going to have a lot of terrible side effects, but it's all we can do for you at this point. So I wasn't okay with that and ended up looking a lot deeper into nutrition. I already kind of had a background in exercise sports science and then I continued on to do um, a holistic nutrition degree. And I learned a lot, and then I ended up healing myself, which is great. Like Ava has taught you, there's two components, or actually more than two, but there's the whole emotional side to healing this kind of issue, and then there's also diet, exercise, lifestyle, and all that. So and digestive support, I want to start with that, because that's kind of where everything goes wrong, right? And we'll start with the gut. So who, who has heard the phrase, illness begins in the gut? Um, and this is kind of where everything goes wrong and one of the things I like everyone to focus on in all my classes is digestion so this is just number one um, you can all ask yourselves that question right now how's your digestion and this is important for a variety of reasons um, and that's because you know these are all the things that our digestive tract does but if you're not digesting your food, then you're not assimilating your nutrients, and then your body's not able to use those nutrients to, their, to its full potential to heal. So just to go over a few functions here, the GI tract is, um, you know, that's how we ingest our food. It prepares food for digestion. That's, you know, the chewing, chewing things up, breaking down the foods we eat. But it's important to think of your digestive tract, and this is kind of weird, but it's like an open tube to the outside world, right? Where I heard somebody <laughs> explain it as like, we're a donut, you know, we're a little donut, and um, foods come in and go out the other end, and this is your body's first line of defense against pathogens, against you know toxins, anything from the outside world. We're putting it directly into our body via our mouth. So um, we want to make sure that's working really well. How about the fact that about 80% or more of your immune system is in your gut? Has anyone heard that before? Wow. Really, there's a few people that are saying no. So this is, again, goes hand in hand with autoimmune things. So this is where it goes wrong. Your immune system is trying to protect us, and this is your body's you know, first line of defense right there. So that's why a lot of people focus on this. And then we're absorbing nutrients, eliminating unused waste products from the body. You want to make sure your motility is working, you know, going every day. And there's just a few key factors here that I kind of wanted to go over. Um, first line on the digestive train, first stop I should say. A lot of people think it's your mouth because you're putting food in. But we really want to think about enjoying your food first, right? That's kind of something I encourage people to do. Because when we smell, I think I see you saying smell and um, sight, then you're getting those salivary enzymes going, and then that helps even more. So that's one thing. And then another thing, does anyone do any sort of like morning shot of um, like lemon juice or apple cider vinegar? Mm -hmm. Adam's saying yes. I yes. Ginger. ginger. Yeah, I've got a ginger drink right here. This is lemon and ginger. It's not really morning anymore, but sometimes it's still good. <laughs> um, anything sour or bitter or acidic like that actually stimulates your gallbladder. Does anyone know what that is? Useless. It's useless. Yeah, it gets taken out a lot. It's actually not useless. Yeah. It's yeah. really important. <laughs> but again, with no, Western medicine, them. you don't have yours anymore? No, anymore? Yeah, so it gets taken out quite a bit. Um, Doctors will come along and they say, oh, it's kind of full of stones, let's just take it out. So we actually want to keep that guy if possible because it's what's responsible for making our bile. So every time we have that bitter 
lemon taste or um, acidic, it actually sends this direct feedback loop to your little gallbladder, which sits by your liver, and it spits out bile, which helps us to digest again. Yes, digestion, you really want to have it be going correctly as to the best of your ability. And yeah. MS, MS can impact motility. Yes. So how do you overcome that? So, normal system. yep, being normal, you should be having at least one bowel movement a day. And then part of the MS thing is because you can't like be as physically active, I think, so we kind of get bottled up that way. Um, but getting enough fiber should be really, really important. And then another thing that I really like to recommend people is magnesium. And that's good for MS anyway, because it's uh, very relaxing. Does anybody already take that as a supplement? Yeah. Yeah. Magnesium. magnesium. How much? Um, I'd have to talk to each one of you to figure it out, but one brand that I really like is Calm, Calm Magnesium, because it's easy, it's in a powder form. You just start out with a teaspoon or so, and that does have quite a bit of an effect on motility, so you've got to start out slow um, and then work your way up. And magnesium is such a common deficiency that most people, you don't have to worry about like ODing on that or anything. Right. And then on to leaky gut, so who's heard that terminology before? From Calm almost everybody in here okay so this happens in the small intestines right here by the way I drew all these pictures for you maybe it is I don't know <laughs> um, so this is uh, yeah the small intestine right there so that's you know the small intestine is really long and if you took it all apart it would cover an entire tennis court and the reason for that is because we need to absorb all, almost all of our nutrients there. So we think about the stomach as this place where we like absorb all our food, but really the stomach does a lot of just breaking down and getting it ready, and then the small intestine is where we assimilate, and that's why we want that to be so healthy and happy. Um, and so on that same level, though, this is where things tend to go wrong. So the inside of your small intestine has these little finger-like projections called villi, and that's what kind of reaches out and grabs the food particles when they're broken down to the correct size, and then it brings it through to the bloodstream intracellularly, so it has like a specific mechanism process for that, and it works when we're healthy and normal and everything, and then sometimes that, this whole brush border can get damaged from things like stress, which Ava's talked about, and then, um, you know, bad diet would be something that contributes to that, toxins, all the things that are on that little wheel that you guys were talking about the other night. Um, so when that happens, you can see here the anything that's in the small intestine, like this is food particles, bacteria, whatever, making it through, directly through, into the bloodstream, and it has no, you know, there's no regulation process, right? And this is where they think a lot of the things go wrong um, with autoimmune because your immune system is attacking it, it's getting into the bloodstream, it's just a mess, you know, you don't want that to be happening. And so the whole point of what I'm talking to you guys about today is healing this, making sure this isn't happening. Because as far as I know, anyone with an autoimmune condition also has leaky gut happening. At this point, this is what we know. You don't have one without the other. So this is what happens first, and then some sort of autoimmune condition happens afterwards. And I also want to mention, you know, everyone in here has MS, but autoimmune all stems from the same type of beginning here. And then we know it's your immune system attacking some sort of tissue in your body, and whatever that tissue is ends up being your diagnosis, right? So people with Hashimoto's have thyroid condition, and that's their immune system attacking there. People with rheumatoid arthritis, that's more of like muscle tissue and things like that. Um, but the list goes on. You know, there's a hundred, over a hundred different uh, conditions these days. And I mean, from my picture, this looks extreme, but this, you have to remember this is micro, micro, microscopic. This is happening on a really small level. Um, and these brush borders, like they regrow every, I think, seven days or something. I would have to look that up, but they're constantly trying to regrow and repair, and so we really want to take care of them. So. You had to draw a muscle. 
Um, so what are some inflammatory foods? And I put them up here. That's going to be refined foods, grains, especially gluten grains, and grain oils. Who here is doing gluten free? What are grain it's oils? So that's a good question. Um, that's going to be like canola oil, safflower oil, anything that comes, you know, from a grain. And I'm going to go into that in a sec. Um, it's not why olive. That's important. It's not olive oil. No, olive is not a grain. That's a fruit, and it's probably one of the best ones you can use. So, if you guys don't take away anything from this talk today, my one recommendation would be to try to do gluten free for reals. That was one of the things that helped me the most to be serious about it. Um, and then the next one would probably be sugar. <laughs> um, so sugar is one of those things, it's highly inflammatory, we have way too much of it, we're not designed to have it in the quantities that we do. Um, most of it's, you know, refined cane sugar and they sneak it into everything and your body just doesn't, you know, you can only do so much with your insulin um, and then it just stops and you either have it like running around your bloodstream or it gets converted to triglycerides, which as we know, that's stored as body fat. So that's really, really not helpful there. And then it also affects your immune system. And alcohol, I don't think I need to go too far into that. We all know it's not that good for us. So just be aware of that. And then nightshades, that's something that's a little more extreme. Um, when I worked with my MS client, we did take nightshades out of his diet because I felt like it was something that could be um, a potential hazard. So that is anything in the Solanaceae family, and that's tomatoes, peppers, you're a farmer, so you know. Eggplant. Egg Eggplant, tomatillos, um, potatoes. 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 White potatoes. White potatoes. That might be the hardest one. But, but you can eat the red potatoes? Um, sweet potatoes are not. Okay, the and the red ones? The little red potatoes? Okay. No, potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. Yeah, sweet potatoes, that's an easy substitution yeah. recipe. You can pretty much swap it out. Um, the Japanese who made it's really nice. So that's something, it's harder in the summer because all that stuff's really nice, but if you're doing, if you're eating seasonally anyway, just take it out in the wintertime and see if that um, does anything. And I'm going to talk about why. And then conventional dairy. So what's conventional dairy? That's non-organic dairy. So dairy is kind of a gray area because I feel like people should probably take that out at least in the beginning and see how it goes. But if you are still eating dairy, then it has to be organic. And goat organic. milk? And goat milk, yeah. Goat milk is okay? It's probably better, yeah. It's a lot different. Um, a lot of people digest it better. I don't want to spend too much time on that though because we're kind of getting short. So then the next thing I want to talk about is essential fatty acids. So essential means that we need it in our diet. That's something you can't make. Um, so the two that we need to consume are omega-6 and omega-3. The problem with today's diet is that we get a ton of omega-6 and hardly any omega-3s. And omega-6s have a pro-inflammatory response in your body. You might say, why do we even need that? Well, we actually need to have some inflammation to heal from certain things. Problem is, most people have way too much inflammation at all times. And then omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So you can see just from this slide that the omega-6s, they end up being overconsumed because they're th in things like any kind of grain, safflower, sunflower, corn, soy, wheat, you know, all those things, and then also a lot of nuts and seeds. But then they're also in grain-fed animals. So <laughs> I heard someone say they only eat chicken and fish. Yeah. So my perspective is that chicken is the least favorable meat to eat. Yes, yes I don't like all of them. It's <laughs> yeah. the least favorable? Yes, I would but say. Got it under the omega-3 section. This is six, yeah, up here. But also Inflammatory. omega-3, yeah. you've got the second it's line. Be so I'm going to I'm going to tell you about that, yeah. <laughs> so this is the key word here is free range um, grass fed. And actually this is pretty hard to find. I've never seen a pastured chicken, but if you're doing eggs, then you want them to be pasture-raised eggs. But just to go back on that, so this omega-6, it's inflammatory. Anything that's eating 
grains is also going to have that same omega profile in the meat. So that's why fish is the best source option for meat. Um, and then followed by grass-fed animals, like grass-fed beef. How can you tell if something is a cold water fish or if it's a farm fish? You should say omega. Yeah. So you're going to get high omega-3s from that. Um, and so then just to get back to the meat hierarchy, next on the list is grass-fed beef, lamb. Actually, lamb's before beef because it's almost always grass-fed. And then you get down to pork and turkey and chicken. And are you going to discuss eggs later? So eggs, it's the same type of thing. You want the chicken to be outside in the sun for vitamin D. You want it to be rooting around in the grass eating bugs. So you get more omega-3s from pasture-raised chickens. That, yes, but I mean, eggs. in your hierarchy of what is good, you've got, okay, lamb first. Or yeah, I didn't put it on there. But. So eggs would be kind of low. Be with chicken, wherever chicken is, right? Like they hang yeah. with chicken. As long they as have the same pasture classifications. Yeah. So pasture race is the key word. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you first? Yeah. Power, power through. Power through. Yes, Robert. Um, eggs in general, though, I mean, it's the yolk. It's full of um, fat. So isn't fat an inflammatory compound that you shouldn't have? No. We want to have more fat in our diet. And I think you're worried about cholesterol. Okay, so, but most people are when they see chicken eggs, egg yolks. Um, and so cholesterol really doesn't have a whole lot of effect on, like dietary cholesterol doesn't have a whole lot of effect on blood cholesterol. Um, there's a few genetic uh, exceptions, but for the most part, this is not, this is like a very, I know it's hard because we've been taught for so long, and I'm going to show you the old food, food pyramid and my food pyramid but all of us in this room kind of grew up with something like this different way of thinking and eating and fear of fat. And now we're trying to reverse that because everybody's not doing too well with that. Um, so just to get back to this really quick. So these are the under-consumed and you want to simultaneously take the omega-6s down and then take the omega-3s up. Um, because fats, they compete for space in your body. If you think about like a cell, lipids, you can only have so much in there. So it's not just about like taking a fish oil supplement. Um, and then also that being said, there's flax, hemp, pumpkin seeds. Anything that's a plant source is gonna be alpha linoleic acid short chain omega-3s. And then the long chain, which is the really, really helpful one, is gonna come from animal sources. And that's things like EPA, if you've heard that. No, EPA and DHA, who's heard? Okay, so DHA is like in every prenatal vitamin because you gotta have that for brain development. And if dairy is under-consumed? Um, the omega-3s. Second line is organic. Yeah, if they're pasture. So that would be pasture. You, if, so organic, so you're worried about the dairy. So you Organic's the great. Any organic dairy is okay. Organic is the kind of a baseline for dairy, but pasture, or pasture raised or grass fed dairy is better. That's the top. That's what we want to shoot for. Because any cow that's eating grass is going to be converting the alpha linoleic leg short chain omega 3s into long chain. So animals will do that for us, which is nice. Um, so does everyone feel pretty good about this? Eat less of these, more of these. <laughs> Um, and then here's that food pyramid that I was talking about. So this is the one that I grew up with on the cereal box. And you can kind of see that this is a recipe for disaster because we just have <laughs> grains all along the bottom and you're able to eat, I think, up to like eight servings. It was like eight to 11 or something, bless you, um, a day, right? Which is gnarly. Like that's eight pieces of bread if you want to. And then the next, part up, we have vegetables and fruits in the same line, and I like to separate those out a bit. And then they have fats at the very, very top, and that's the fear of fat that we've been learning for so long. So then over here, I have my food pyramid, <laughs> and we have all plants on the bottom, right? So if anyone's kind of looked into Terry Walls or read her book, she's all about the vegetables. I think something like nine servings a day, which is pretty hard to get in. Um, if you're not just like packing them into a smoothie. But we do want plants to be the basis of any healthy diet. 
And then next up on the next round here, we have the healthy, high quality proteins, because protein is very, very important for your immune system and for healing, healing your gut. Remember the microvilli, they need amino acids to repair themselves. And then I also have fats. I moved that way down because we want to have more healthy fats in our diets. Uh, and then I, I separated the fruits out. <laughs> And that's just because when we're in this compromised state, you kind of want to watch your sugar intake, and fruit is a source of sugar. It's not to be said that they don't have beneficial vitamins and minerals and things that we can be using, but I don't think that they should be in the same baseline as the vegetables. What, what about dried fruits? So dried fruit is even, even more concentrated in sugar because if you think about, like, say, a peach, it's been shrunk down, so you're still getting a whole peach, but it's only this big, and then you eat five of them. So you eat way too much. Mm -hmm. It's so okay if you eat a little bit. Yeah, maybe not, one piece or two, but... Not if you eat a real lot. Mm -hmm. Too much sugar there. Um, and then again, there's your pastured dairy products, if you're going to do that. Um, and then up at the top here, I have something called booster foods, which I have a slide for that, but we'll blow through it quick. And then this is kind of what your plate should look like if you don't like the pyramid. And then I have optional sprouted grains or red wine, just depending on where you are. So here's um, all the different anti-inflammatory diets. <laughs> Some of them are more um, hardcore than others. So like you'll see, this is kind of the standard anti-inflammatory diet. There's traditional foods, which is kind of all about you know, the way that things are prepared. We used to do a lot of uh, soaking and sprouting and fermenting. So that's kind of getting back to that. Um, and then most people are familiar with paleo. There's the GAPS diet. And then we have Terry Walls down here, which is very much geared towards MS. Keto and then autoimmune paleo. And that's when you're taking out some of these potential irritants. So it kind of depends on how acute you're issues are, if you're in a flare, then you might want to go towards something that is really hardcore and restrictive. Why is it saying eliminate seeds and nuts? So nuts and seeds and grains, they're all really hard on the digestive system. Didn't you, wasn't there something else, or maybe, maybe somewhere else I saw that said nuts are good? Yes, so they can be good. I don't recommend taking them out for a long period of time. Um, this is just to give yourself a second to heal taking out things that are potentially harmful to that gut that we talked about, like the gut lining. You want to just keep it real simple. So, so the Ayurvedic diet, is not, you don't consider it anti-inflammatory? Yeah, it has some great components to it that are very anti-inflammatory. But it's also got a lot of green. Yeah, so that would be that, that would be a part that I'd have a, a harder time with. Yeah, the grains are very hard to digest. And J Japanese have like, um, fermented grains. Uh huh. So, so fermented, that's, yeah, I mean, that could be, it just depends. So the point of this slide is to like see which one kind of appeals to you or applies to you, but then see this is what they all kind of have in common. This is the baseline of, you know, looking into the grain thing, the legumes, processed sugar, I mean, processed foods or processed sugar, and maybe dairy, and then your emphasizing healthy fats, increasing vegetables, and high quality protein. Do you consider these all basically the same level or there's something you, you would recommend above others? So like I said, it's about you and what you want to choose. Um, but they all have the same kind of theme. Um, okay. This one's really a little more, uh, you know, it's a little more restrictive. That one's way more lenient. So Terry Walls had a, a lot of success with her approach. And the point is that there's all these out, out there and there's resources for all of them. Um, and they all kind of have something in common. Yeah. So what do we want to eat? <laughs> so emphasis on whole foods, organic foods. We don't want to have pesticides anymore, if possible. That's, that's a real big one. Some people still don't really get the organic thing or, or think that it's a priority. My parents kind of will go back and forth with that sometimes, but I think it's always best to choose organic. 
um, diversified, seasonal, and local, so you want to get a lot of different things. We kind of get stuck in a rut sometimes of eating the same thing over and over again. A lot of pure beverages, so getting enough water, and strategic, like don't eat something that you don't like. <laughs> don't eat broccoli just because you heard it's good for you. Find something else, there's a lot of different things out there. And then this is just a slide that I like to show about diversity, because each color of the rainbow gives you a different nutrient. And that's another thing that Terry Walls talks about. She wants you to eat a different, I think three different fruits or vegetables from a color or from a category. And you can see like red has lycopene, orange has beta carotene, yellow often has vitamin C, green has chlorophyll, which is extremely cleansing. Purple, you've heard about like antioxidants and blueberries. And then white even has stuff in it that's really good for you. And then this, but this is something that we um, kind of give out to people in our anti-inflammatory class to give them an idea of what they can eat. So there's lots of vegetables on the list, um, lots of fruits, cooking fats, herbs and spices, and then some things that we recommend having in your pantry. And then fermented foods is also pretty key. So um, at the top of that pyramid, remember we have booster foods. So this is something that you can add into your diet in small amounts um, that have a lot of nutritional benefits. So things like seaweed, I know it's not popular, but I'm trying to bring it back. <laughs> it has um, every amino acid that you need, plus iodine, which is critical for the thyroid. Um, I just learned that it's an incredible source of calcium if anyone's kind of worried about bone health. Um, and then algae also has similar nutrients. And then cultured foods, like we talked about, that's going to give you all your probiotics, nutritional yeast, and then spices and herbs. Make sure you're using plenty of those in your cooking. And then I just want to talk about sleep for a second. Does everyone in here get eight hours or more? No. So sleep, like I said, that's one of the things that was kind of ignored for a long time. So that's something to think about. Plus, you know, it has a big effect on your immune system. And then this is a big one right here. Healing happens when you sleep. And everybody in this room needs more of that. So, in conclusion, <laughs> we blew through that pretty fast. So I want you guys to work on optimizing your digestion, eating plenty of antioxidant-rich whole foods. That's going to be that pyramid bottom, you know, with all the, the vegetables. Removing potential allergens. So this is <laughs> the gluten that I'm talking about. Gluten's irritating to your microvilli. A lot of people don't really think that's a big deal, but I encourage you to try it out. Just do a three-month period. It's not, either way, you know, it's one of the cheapest things you can do because you're just not having it for a bit and see how it affects you. Um, and then avoiding your refined carbs because I don't think I said this, but refined carbs, like anything made from flour, has the same effect in your bloodstream as sugar once you digest it. It just goes straight to glucose. And the grains and the grain oils, and that has to do with both your digestion, hard to digest, but also remember those omega-6s, high omega-6s. Balance your essential fatty acids and sleep for eight hours. How do you say your last name? Jam Goshen is my medium. So, was that enough? Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.